Andrew Yang has inspired me to put humanity first, and I realized one thing I could do for humanity is open up my tr bag of tricks, so to speak. So I've been an educator for the last 10 years, I've been a parent for the last 7 years, and every parent and every educator has a whole bunch of tips and tricks, and I'm going to go ahead and start a series where I share those tips and tricks for you. So. Trick number one that I absolutely love and I use with my kids and I try and use in my classroom a lot is when kids come up to me with problems, I don't just give them solutions at all. I, I try and let them come to the solution. So I'm going to give you an example, a real life example that actually happened last year with my three-year-old son at the time, Luke. And he asked me, can I make my own peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Because his big brother, Sean, had been making his own peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. He was so proud of it. And little brother Luke wanted to get in on that action. So your typical response, and there's nothing wrong with this at all, is to say, yeah, buddy, that's that's fantastic. You're taking this journey into learning how to cook and learning how to take care of yourself. Of course, that's super exciting. At least I hope you are. So yes, and then you're like, all right, so here's what we do. We get the two pieces of bread. We put it in the toaster. We get the peanut butter. We get the jelly. We spread it on. And you make it into a whole bonding moment. And it's beautiful. And it's great. And that's awesome and you get bonus points for doing that. But there's another solution you could take, and this is a solution that I take in my classroom, and this is the solution that I took last year, and I said, yeah, buddy, let's go do it. And so I walked into the kitchen with him, and I was like, go at it, buddy. I'm just here uh, if you need any help. And he proceeded to get his stool and get the bread. He uh, asked for my help to grab the peanut butter and the jelly because they're both up high, and uh, then he grabbed himself a butter knife. And he was a little bit nervous about the grabbing the butter knife. So I was like, okay, buddy, I'm right here. We just got to remember that this part of the butter knife is sharp and it can hurt you. But as long as you're being safe and you're using it like a proper tool, you're good to go, big guy. And he proceeded to get a humongous chunk of peanut butter and scoop it down onto one side of the bread. And he did grab the heel, of course, because he was, you know, he's just grabbing two pieces. Uh, so one was the heel. And then he grabs the, the can of jelly and he has trouble getting it out because it's all wiggly and then he puts it on the bread and he didn't want it toasted and I didn't bring it up. And uh, so he's trying to smear it on there and it barely even smears. And then he slaps it together. We get a plate, he gets a cup of milk, we sit down and he starts eating it. And I say, oh, how's your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, buddy? He's like, it's good. And I was like, cool. And I'm like, do you like yours better than say me or mommy's? And he's like, no, it, it doesn't taste as good. And I was like, well, what, what, what doesn't taste as good? And he's like, I can't taste the jelly. And I was like, wow, you can't taste the jelly. So right there, let's break that down. He is now learning about portion control and why a huge amount of something doesn't necessarily, a huge amount of a good thing doesn't necessarily amount to that being a great thing. All at the same time, I then bust his mind open by saying, hey, it's a lot easier to spread jelly, to put the jelly on the bread, uh, sometimes with a spoon or sometimes by toasting it first. So that way you're going up against a hard surface and it just scrapes on there and it actually makes a really cool sound, which I can, I can let you hear next time. So he's now learned something. And both kids, let's say the kid that in, the solution, in uh, solution A, where I give him step-by-step -step instructions, and my son ha have both learned today to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Fantastic, amazing, spectacular. That's a huge moment in their life. You should cheer that on. But by asking them to do it themselves or allowing them to do it themselves, let's put it like that, we have now taught him potentially about portion control, uh, about how it's a lot easier to do things when we toast the bread, about how to spread the jelly and some tips to spread the jelly. And he's learned today that, hey, I am perfectly capable of doing this. I can make my own food. I can cook. Because to him, he is cooking right now or she is cooking right now. And you should celebrate that. But I'm not the best at it. <laughs> Mine did not taste nearly as good as what mom and dad make, so maybe I should come to them when I need help. Maybe I shouldn't act like I know how to make the best peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I should learn from them. I don't know. Uh, but either way, I've had a lot more success doing that and, and I can really tell kids who have had that done to them and who haven't had them done to them because I feel like part of doing something yourself is finding out the solution to your own problems. 
And by allowing these kids to work through how to make the peanut butter and jelly or how to get up to the sink or how to use the soap dispenser or a whole, a whole variety of different things, we're giving them the tools they need to be able to figure out more complex problems as they go along. And hey, maybe even looking at this from an emotional, emotional standpoint, we're teaching them that when they have a problem, much like you know uh, when I'm making my peanut butter and jelly, I can reach out to my parents or my teacher or whoever you may be to that child and then you can really help them out. But there you go. That's my first parent teacher tip trick. Let me know what you think about this Yang gang and teachers alike and parents alike. I am all for input and let me know in the comments below. Do you have any tips and tricks that you would love to share? Because I personally would love to try them out in my classroom and all my kids myself. So let me know what you think about the segment and let me know your tips and tricks down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.